Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, crazy day. There's just so much uh, going on that we could, you know, we, we could literally have this uh, update for two hours. Literally, there's just so much going on. I'm going to try to uh, condense this thing in the 15-20 minute period and try to figure out uh, what happens next. So let's kind of rewind, right? Let's kind of rewind here. Um, if you remember last night's video, uh, we had a two th nearly a 2,000 point move in the Dow, right? Down 2,000 points. I, I felt that the worst thing the bulls could have done uh, was to get a gap up today. As a matter of fact, I said last night we needed kind of one of those uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater scenarios, you know, down 300, down 500 points uh, at the open, you know, just trigger a bunch of stops, no moss filter everybody out and start making a way up. And, you know, we talked about yesterday that I felt there was a measured potential uh, to the 212 area, right? To the 212 area here. And I felt this is the area that the bulls needed to hold for any, uh, for any type of washout to start bouncing back. And, I, you know, I woke up this morning, you know, I woke up around 10 to 7, saw the futures kind of flat. And I go, ah, it's kind of sucks. Not really the open that I wanted, uh, just because again, we needed some sort of, um, some sort of closure for this interval. And again, like I said last night in the video, don't think this is the bottom. Okay. We, again, the, the cues are so far still removed from the macro linear weekly, uh, weekly support that we could still go lower. It was just basically a trade going into today. And I looked at the charts, uh, somebody, you know, somebody in the live webinar said, hey, you know, we, we kind of, we tested those levels pre-market. And I looked at the 60 minute view and I go, oh, wait a minute, holy crap, you're absolutely right. Again, I wasn't sitting there watching futures all night. Um, but at four o'clock, you know, four o'clock in the morning when the ECNs open up, the queues, if you look at the queues, the queues, the low of the queues were 212 and they started moving higher and then ultimately went green in the pre-market session. And I started thinking to myself, well, well, was that the washout, right? We talked about 212 uh, for at least the, the, the near uh, near future. Um, is, you know, was this valid? And then, it, you know, I started thinking more and I started saying to myself, well, it's like that old adage, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around to see it fall, does it make a sound, right? I mean, how many of you guys were up at four o'clock in the morning trading, you know, trading the cues? So, you know, we started moving higher. We started moving higher. I, I put a good game plan together. The pivots were out of control today. Very, very out of control. We'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. But I, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't like, you know, a small gap up and then we start turning around going lower. I wanted to make sure. So I wanted to start my day uh, pretty much at 10 o'clock, um, you know, pretty much at 10 o'clock. And that's kind of what I did. You know, that's pretty much what I did. Maybe, wait, was, did I start a little bit before? I don't remember. Um, I think, no, I think I started at 10 o'clock at the confirmation channels. And I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't one of those, we gap, we pull back a little bit, we pull back a little more, and the next thing you know, we roll over. And the, the market started really getting strong. Very, very aggressive. Uh, again, like I said, in a few minutes, I'll show you the pivots. Uh, from from the private feed, um, so very very strong. But then I started looking at the scoreboard, right? And again, remember we had two thousand point decline in the Dow, and I look at the scoreboard. And I'm like, well, we only up three hundred. Eh, we're only up two seventy five. We're only up two fifty. And I said to myself, well, we're down two thousand. We're only up two hundred. Doesn't sound bullish to me. But the action was so superior, right? It was so superior till about lunchtime that it didn't make a difference, right? It, it absolutely didn't make a difference of what happened. And you see a really, really strong move. And then, you know, slowly but surely, you started seeing more and more headlines from the CDC talking about, again, uh, you know, fear-mongering all over the place. Um, I spoke to, the funny thing is, I, I, I had a conversation with my wife's cousin, the reason why that's important, and I shared it in the live webinar, his son who's in his first, where he's going to his first year of medical school, 
he works in one of these, you know, one of those walk-ins, like a, one of those CVS mini clinic things. So, and, and he's in New York, right? So he's in New York. So I, you know, I, I called up his dad and I was like, hey, is, is he talking about anything about Corona? He goes, no, everything's all good. Uh, all, you know, all good. He's taking the precautions, you know, the, he's throwing his uh, clothes right away, uh, you know, getting him washed, a lot of sanitizing. But again, they, they haven't seen any cases, remote cases of Corona yet. So that's a good thing, right? So uh, all these cases that they, you know, they keep on popping up and you hear rumors today, uh, there were 80 some odd cases in Nassau County, which is in Long Island, uh, in New York. Uh, so again, a lot of unconfirmed, a lot of fear mongering. We don't know, right? We don't know yet, but from, you know, from the horse's mouth, uh, again, from my family's point of view, I called up uh, my cousin's, excuse me, my wife's cousin. He said, hey, he works in uh, the walk-in, one of those walk-in centers, and so far, so good, uh, nothing, right? Nothing. They have a pretty good volume uh, there. What's feeling it now, though, with all these potential fear mongering around the world, you're starting to see, well, not starting to see, you've seen now in three, four days, anything to do, right? Anything to do with travel, with restaurants, with casinos, with restaurants, with airlines, with cruise ships, get absolutely destroyed because again the, the you know the, you know the whole uh the doom you, i forgot what channel it is it's like it's like for years i've been making that show doom days uh doom day preparation when this dude is building a bunker like 90 you know 90 feet on the ground he's and everybody's like haha that guy's an idiot yeah he might he might have something i'm joking i'm joking but that's kind of what we're seeing here and if you look at the theme of what they're selling off as much as technology has gotten sold off you see how where the qr where the cues are still uh in the spectrum right you still see it it's still a big big uptrend but if you look at the stocks that have gotten killed like really really killed are things that people don't want to be in crowded places like look at for example the restaurants sector right you got dunkin donuts destroyed you got Starbucks, right? Starbucks destroyed. You have Darden restaurants, destroy, I mean, destroyed. You have Denny's, right? Destroyed. I mean, you could go down, you know, down the road. Red Robin, uh, good burgers, by the way. Destroyed. I mean, just crate and barrel, right? Destroyed. So again, you have to look for to, to, to get really good value shorts. You have to look at those groups. I mean, whatever still hasn't got destroyed, you have to look at those groups. Even though Chipotle is starting to come down, you know, might have some more room to go. Um, you know, so start looking at groups. If you're looking at restaurant names that haven't really got destroyed yet, that's the group to look at. Look at the airlines today, right? Love, destroyed. I mean, not just today, just overall, right? Delta, destroyed. JetBlue, right? JetBlue, destroyed. Start looking at the airline stocks. What, haven't, what hasn't really gone down there? Again, what else is going to be empty if there's a pandemic? God forbid. Casinos. Who the hell wants to be in a crowded casino? Look at the setups, right? Win, right? Las Vegas Sands, right? They're all coming in. And the cruise ships, these damn things are going to be empty. Carnival Cruise Line, massive put buying the whole time. RCL, again, start looking at that group. So as much as we trade technology, and again, if, 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 on our watch list tonight, literally, we have casinos, restaurants, and Tesla on the short side. Um, but the most amazing part is this is where the theme of the market, the market is. It's crowded areas. Even stocks like, for example, like Lyft, right? If you look at Uber right if you look at uber if you look at lyft again the reason why they're taking getting down so dramatically if nobody wants to be in crowded places where the hell are people going right so so again there's a huge domino effect in all this stuff and if you do your homework and again maybe in the middle of the week it's a little harder to you know to get that macro picture but if you do your homework especially i bet you um on the weekend you'll see other groups that are cracking and you turn around and say oh my god this makes such sense the one stock that makes complete sense of actually thriving, right? Actually thriving this environment is Netflix and chill. And if you look at Netflix compared to everything else, it closed relatively at the highs. Again, think about it. If everybody's staying home, Netflix and chill, baby. You got Narcos, you got Ozark coming up. A lot of good stuff for a pandemic, right? So if Trojans Republic, right? Invest in Trojans, there's gonna be a lot of babies, right? If there's a pandemic, there's gonna be a lot of babies being born 12 months from now. Again, stick to themes. You got to think outside the box. Think what's going to work. Think what's going to get killed. And again, that's how you can kind of make your plan. Um, very, again, very, very aggressive day today. Uh, I'm not sure it could have played out any better. Um, just a lot of things going. Very aggressive action. Uh, let's talk about this. Here's the most ironic part about trading. 
My number one watch today, right, at morning strategy today was Roku, right? Well, I think we talked about this last night. It was the strongest stock last night. It behaved so well at the open, sold off four points. Never gave me a, obviously never gave us a trade. So again, the most ironic part is one stock is strong one day, the next day it's completely out of favor. And again, it, it goes back to the old adage that base, it's, it's almost like a baseball analogy. You know, you know, momentum is only as good as the next day's starting pitcher. Roku was strong into the close yesterday. The Dow was down 900, it was up $1.50 in the day. Today goes straight down. So I'm just insane. So let's talk about this. Uh, space we caught quickly, aggressively. We knew there was going to be supply here. It hit supply perfectly. We started watching that. Uh, we started watching that level above that. Uh, what was it? 30, 30, 30, 30 what was it? Thirty three seventies, right? Thirty three seventies, thirty three eighties. We got long. We knew there was going to be supply, and I knew it was going to get stuffed at supply. And this is what we talked about: that thirty three thirties, thirty three fifties levels. It hit that level came right back on. So it was a pretty good scalp trade. Uh, Netflix, again, Netflix and chill. That is the theory. That is the theme, at least going uh, for tomorrow. Anything on strength is, should, is the only name that I like into strength. But look at this move pre-market. Insane. Uh, 365, 365, 40, big area. If there's any type of rally, gonna make, it needs to reclaim. Not only did it reclaim. I mean, this was an insane move, right? So here's the whole level right here. Everybody see it? 365.30s, it took out this 365.30s and literally like it, it just, it, it went up $20, like insane, absolutely insane move on Netflix. Uh, Facebook was strong today, right at the open. Uh, we talked about this pre-market, uh, 198.80, 199 needs to build. Here was, you know, here was Facebook, right? So here was the 98.80s right here, all this whole area here. 98, 80s, 99, it went to one, uh, 201, uh, big, big move on, on that. Uh, TDLC never triggered during the market. It came out, you know, it came out of uh, earnings after the close. So that obviously that 126 never validated uh, the whole trading day. It came out of earnings, big, big move. You know what TDLC does? TDOC, when I, when I heard about it yesterday, I started laughing. TDOC is basically an online doctor. It was basically like is going to Skype with you and say, you got this. Can you, can you imagine the conversation? Hey, doc, it's itching me here. I got a rash over here. And the doctor's turning to you on the other side of the, uh, of, of, uh, the, web, the, the webcam and turning to you, hold on, I got to adjust my, I gotta adjust my uh, internet connection. Ridiculous. But hey, what works is works, right? So TDSE for tomorrow. Uh, will definitely be in play. Uh, ENPH was a monster move here. Again, uh, needs to reclaim 50 and build. Here was ENPH, right? Here was ENPH. Here was the 50 right over here. You see all these bars, right? Pre, all these candles matter, guys. It gives you a clean view. So 49 and a half, 49.75, 49.75, 49.80, reclaim the 50, explode. It went to almost 54. Huge move on ENPH. And they just kept on going one after another, after another net, uh, we talked about this last night on the video, 2060, 2075 needs to build. Here was net, right? Here was net. Uh, it took out this whole 2060, 2075, went all the way to 2269. Again, as you can see the theme, NVAX. I said NVAX needs to build for all you uh, small cap lovers over nine. Look at this candle, guys. I mean, this was an absolute ridiculous candle, right? I mean, look at this candle here. So here was the nine, right? Here was the nine, just, just. Yeah, it just went to 11, just a huge, huge move there as well. Uh, just a lot of good stuff today. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, I forgot to put NVIDIA, uh, I forgot to put NVIDIA on the Twitter feed. That was actually my first trade of the day. Beautiful move on NVIDIA uh, as well. Uh, Netflix exploded, Facebook take on the way up. Uh, Nenvax take on the way up. Good job by whoever this is. Good job, good job, good job. 10% in five minutes, not a bad play. Uh, Tesla. Oh, Tesla exploded. Uh, and, and I don't want to use the word exploded. These days it might not be exploded, but hey, 805, we talked about potential. Here it is. 805 pivot needs to reclaim and build. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, my friend Mike asked, hey, Mike, you know, where's, where's the potential to Netflix? I responded higher than you paid for. Uh, not Netflix, uh, uh, NVAX higher than you paid for it. Again, who, who knows of these small caps selling the way up? $11. Oh my God. Uh, net, nice move. Again, for all you new folks, and again, thank you very much. Uh, yesterday, again, uh, we talked about uh, if you want to lock in 
the price uh, of this Twitter feed for the next couple of days. Uh, please do so. We got a really good response uh, yesterday, this morning, uh, actually throughout the day as well. Uh, again, this is, guys, there's no editing. This is it. These are the pivots. Uh, there is nothing more, nothing less. This is it. They're going to work or they're not going to work. So uh, NET, uh, blah, 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 blah. And again, here is 805 Netflix, here, uh, Tesla. Here comes the launch. Uh, again, here's what I said. I said, sell into this 813 push. The reason why 813, guys, again, there, there's, there's no guessing. Stocks move from supply to supply and demand to demand. If you look at where it stopped, right? If you looked at where it stopped here on the 60 minute view, right? If you looked at where it stopped, here was the 805, right? Here was the 805, everybody see that? Right, you see this candle? Here was the 805 and it stopped right into supply 813. So again, you know, perfect, perfect move, uh, perfect move into, uh, into supply. So crazy, crazy stuff, crazy, crazy stuff today. Uh, again, after the close, the market sells off. After the close, uh, Microsoft says, hey, something, something, blah, 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 will be affected by Corona. I think every single one of these stocks should say exactly the same thing at the same time. Every stock is going to be affected, right? Every stock, every business is going to be affected by this thing. So Microsoft, again, uh, you would think it would probably be down 10. It's only down a few bucks after the, after the close. But again, a lot of sell uh, stigma in the market still went down today. Um, again, you have to be nimble. You don't need to take a lot of exposure on both sides of the market. There's so much range now, so much range uh, in the middle of the day that you really could have good opportunity uh, while sleeping at night. Again, I'm just trading ranges right now. I think that's the play. Uh, you don't need to overthink stocks confirm a specific way. Those are the plays. Uh, those are the plays you want to take. Tight stops, big aggression, high measured potential, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until they stop working. So uh, really, really good, uh, solid day today. Uh, unfortunately, for tomorrow, the only plays that I, I, I could share with you guys, um, I like Netflix. I like Netflix into any dip, uh, into rising support or break above today's highs. I like this little stock, Bimmy. Uh, I like this little stock, Bimmy. Uh, it looks pretty good, actually. If this thing starts reclaiming, uh, you know, 420 or so, maybe you can give a move up. Uh, but again, most of my plays for tomorrow are casinos. Uh, casinos to the downside, uh, airlines, the, assuming they don't gap down two, three, four dollars each. Um, I like casinos. I like restaurants. I like, uh, restaurants, casinos, uh, airlines. I like to the downside as well for tomorrow. And I like Tesla. Okay. I think Tesla, if it loses the 20 day moving average tomorrow, there is a lot of room to the downside. So, uh, guys, again, uh, just a last minute reminder for all you guys who want to jump into the feed uh, and you want to get a basic idea of these pivots, how they work. Again, this is the feed. Again, there is uh, some good stuff, especially if you, if you trade beta. If you trade beta, this is uh, right up your alley. Uh, lock in that, you know, lock in the current rate because uh, it will uh, go higher. It will actually will double. It will double in the next few days. Uh, I think it's a great introduction to pivots and just to see if they're right for you. Guys, God bless. I wish you the best. Stay safe, sanitize, wash your hands, right? You don't need guns and ammo just yet. Just joking, just joking. But note somewhere this, Jim Chanos, okay, Jim Chanos, David Tice, and every single Tesla Q guy, right, that's been holding three shares short for the last 300 points, we can't have them win. If the world ends and we all die and they all die with us, somehow they win. And somehow turning in their grave in, 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 in hell, they're going to win. Don't let Jim Chanos win. Guys, God bless. Stay safe. And I'll see you all. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.